Matthew tells us that as Jesus walked alongside the Sea of Galilee, he began to call his disciples, Peter, Andrew, James, and John. Now, Peter, Andrew, James, and John were fishermen. And Jesus called out to them and said, Come, follow me, and I will take you from being fishers of fish to being fishers of people. I will send you out to fish for people. And an amazing thing happens. It says that immediately they dropped everything that they had, left behind their family business, and went and followed Jesus. And later, along the same seashore, Jesus would call Matthew a tax collector, and he too would immediately leave everything that he had and go and follow Jesus. Now, why would these men do this? It seems pretty radical. Well, to answer that question, it's helpful to understand something about the rabbi disciple system in the first century. Every young Jewish boy grew up wanting to be a rabbi. And every young Jewish boy and girl would at least go to an elementary school called Beit Sofar, or House of the Book. And there, their job was to memorize the first five books of the Hebrew Bible, what we would call the Old Testament. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And the best of the best would be able to graduate and go on to the next school of learning, a type of secondary school called Beth Talmud, or House of Learning. And their job was to memorize the rest of the Hebrew Bible. And from there, the best of the best of that group would be allowed to apply to Beth Midrash, or House of Seeking, which was a type of Ivy League school for would-be rabbis. Now a student would find a rabbi that he respected, someone that he wanted to be like, and he would say to that rabbi, Rabbi, I want to follow you. Now the rabbi's job was to question the would-be disciple, to seek to determine not whether or not he knew the scriptures, but whether or not he could imitate his teachings, become like him, and pass on his way of life. And if the student could answer the rabbi's questions to his liking, then he would say to him, Come, follow me. And these were the words that every student longed to hear and he would leave behind his family, his job, his vocation, and he would go and become the disciple of that rabbi. Now if the student didn't quite make the cut, the rabbi would say, ah, oh, my son, you know the Torah, you know the teaching well, but I'm afraid that you cannot be my disciple. Go home, make babies, and pray that they become rabbis. Now the very fact that in the Gospel accounts these men are fishermen, it shows that they were not the best of the best, that they did not make the cut. And so when Jesus, a respected teacher of the law, a teacher of God's Word, comes along and says, come, follow me, they can hardly believe it. And so they leave everything behind and they go and follow Jesus. Now what Jesus was saying through this was what every rabbi who said this was saying. He believed that you could become like him. And that's one of the amazing things about Jesus' call to us as his disciple. It's not based upon how much scripture we know. It's not based upon whether or not we have it all memorized. Jesus would call all kinds of people to him from all kinds of backgrounds, men, women, rich, poor, all ethnicities, all races. And his requirement to be a disciple was this. Do you have in your heart a desire to follow him? And so many people came and became followers of Jesus. And Jesus would form around himself a loving Christ-centered community that would be unlike any community that had ever existed. And that community would become the church. And along these waters, Jesus would further teach his disciples and shape them into his image and help them become like him. 
and he would send them out on mission. For at the heart of being a disciple of Jesus is sharing Christ with others and becoming fishers of people. Faith is a choice, and so is who we follow. We can choose to follow others, we can choose to follow our own path, or we can choose to follow Jesus. If we want to follow Jesus, Jesus says, come, follow me. We must choose him, but he has already chosen us. So now, how about you? Where are you in following Jesus? Where are you on the path of discipleship? What benefit do you see in being part of a loving, Christ-centered community? And who can you share Christ with today? Thank you.